Pnuvo's new anti-cheat system has been the talk of the town, ever since Bethesda announced it was now part of Doom Eternal's online system. But, just how bad is this new anti-cheat system? I'll begin by preempting the most common question likely to come from this video, that being, what makes you the expert? I'm not a security engineer, but I am experienced in this area. With an honours degree in computing, dual focusing in networking and computer science. Additionally, I also have a decade in the IT industry, working from first line through to third line, as well as in software development. Now, with that out of the way, in order to make this video accessible to everyone, I will do my best to simplify things. Let's begin by visualising your computer as a bunch of layers. In the bottom, you have the hardware. Next, you have the kernel. Above that, the operating system. And finally, the applications. It's only possible to talk within a layer or to an adjacent layer. For example, applications can't directly talk to the kernel, only the operating system or each other. This is where the concern surrounding Denuvo's anti-cheat comes from which I'm going to call just DAC from now on. DAC sits alongside the kernel in the stack, which allows it to monitor everything that the operating system does. Furthermore, this potentially gives it access to your entire PC, allowing them to view your files, what you type on your keyboard, even that <clears throat> strange website you deny any knowledge of. Don't worry, we won't tell. At this time, DAC supposedly doesn't do this, Odetto, the creators of DAC, state on their website that it's in their best interest to avoid collection of any personally identifiable information. Unlike other anti-cheat solutions, theirs does not take screenshots, scan your file system, or stream shellcode from the internet. That they only collect information on how the operating system interacts with the game. Now, overall, this isn't really that different from any other anti-cheat system. And anti-cheat systems, unfortunately, are a necessity. So, it's benign then, I hear you ask? Well, yes, according to the creators it is, but that's not the problem here. In the IT and security world, we have a concept known as the principle of least privilege. The idea is that any entity, be it human or software, should only be given the bare minimum access they require in order to perform their tasks. This is to reduce the risk of a malicious actor being able to cause damage. Here's an example. If your local bank allowed anyone to go anywhere, then it would be easy for a potential bank robber to simply walk in and steal the money. But if access to the vault is restricted only to the bank manager, then the robber can only get in if the manager lets them. That's an overly simplified example, but POLP in a nutshell. DAC goes against this principle, and in doing so makes itself a potential for security flaw. Going back to the bank example, think of the vault as the kernel and Dak is a guy who now spends his day inside the vault. The bank will say, eh, it's fine, all he does is he counts the money as it comes in and as it goes out, just to make sure the numbers add up. Perfectly reasonable. But what if one day someone convinces the guy in the vault that he should start reporting false figures and pocketing a little bit of cash? Suddenly this once benign actor is a conduit for malicious intent. That's essentially the situation we're in here, and it's not just speculation. Back in 2005, Sony placed a kernel level DRM onto their CD releases, which was taken advantage of by hackers in a mass phishing attack. I'll place a link to the Ars Technica article on that in the description, but for anyone who remembers that debacle, it's like the beginning of Deja Vu, only unlike Sony, Bethesda was somewhat upfront about it. Addressing this concern, DAC product owner Mikhail Breshishev, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, has told Ars Technica that DAC does not attempt to maintain the integrity of the system, block cheats, game mods, or developer tools. It simply detects cheats. DAC has certification from renowned kernel security researchers, completed regular audits, and was penetration tested by independent cheat developers. He further went on to say that if a driver exploit is discovered in the wild, revocable certificates and self-expiring network keys can be used as kill switches to cut them off. He admits that no solution is infallible, but states that their penetration testing, certification, and security auditing is significantly higher than any reasonable standard. Looking at this reply here then, it's fair to say that Erdetto have taken every step possible to ensure their system is secure. However, no application is unbreakable, 
and exploits can exist in the wild for days or even weeks before they're made public. As DAC becomes more popular, it will become a more intriguing target to malicious attackers. Even Rome fell within a thousand years. DAC isn't the only system like this, it should be noted. The new game Valorant uses a near identical system called Vanguard, although I've not been able to research this particular system yet. However, based on what little information I do have, it's actually worse, as DAC only runs when the game does, whereas Vanguard runs from the moment you log in, regardless of whether or not you play Valorant. To summarise then, DAC, and Vanguard for that matter, failed to uphold one of the most fundamental concepts of IT security, by having far more access than any anti-cheat system should have. In doing so, they make themselves targets for hackers to open up not just a back door, but the entire back wall into your computer. In my view as an IT professional, this is not an application I would ever allow to exist in an ecosystem in which I have control, until its privileges are revoked to a more reasonable level, even if the developers made it unhackable. That's something that simply can never be done. That's all from us on that subject, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.